Hey guys, Condivore here. This is my T91. Well, it's my T91 upper on my SBR lower. Today I want to talk about T91 handguards. Now, there are not a lot of options out there for handguards for the T91, despite what you may see on this table. There are just not that many companies that make T91 handguards, and unfortunately a lot of them are airsoft handguards, and some of those are okay, but we're going to fire through them really quick. First off, let's talk a couple quirks about how handguards mount on the T91, and I'll take this apart, and we'll show you old school, modified old school, airsoft, and I think maybe in service? I can't find any information, but I think this might actually be a handguard that is being used by the Taiwanese, at least special forces in some ways. But anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to get this handguard off and we're going to have a quick look at the T91's handguard mounting system and then we'll fire through all these, do a really quick install and some basic thoughts. So this is the T91 with the handguards off. Now, there's a couple of things we have to notice here that are different than an Air 15. First off, we have this cup at the rear and this cup is where our handguard will normally sit inside. Normally our points of contact with a handguard are this cup and basically a tight fit between the sides of this up here on the on our gas block and our front side block. Then you can see this pinhole. That's generally where the locking pin goes. And that's exactly how the factory handguards work on these. So I'm going to pop the pin through. See the pin comes through, it's retained. Bottom handguard slides on like that. You can see heat shield wraps around. Upper handguard slides on like that. This takes a little bit of fiddling to get the hole to line up, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna make you wait for that. So I'll just do it. There we have it. I just tap that pin right in. And that's our factory handguard. Now, we have a few options with the factory handguard of things that we can change. Um, the first one is actually an official Taiwan, I think it's Taiwanese military used part, which is the tri-rail. The tri-rail fits very nicely up front here. You can see the gas cutouts match. Basically, they're a screw holes with metal inserts in them that the tri-rail fits right over. You screw it in there and your tri-rail can let you mount a flashlight on the side of your gun. Now, one thing to notice is first off, look how much higher that front rail is than the rail on the receiver. It is significantly higher. If you put a designator up top, you might be blocking your view. The other thing is, if you look at the angle right here between the handguard body and that little rail, you'll notice that there's hardly any space there. Some flashlights and such won't be able to mount because there's not enough space for this side of their mount to fit. Especially anything that rocks onto a, onto a rail will not work very well on this. The other thing you can do is you can take this plastic bit up, dremel it out, and make yourself some M-Lock. I did that with this. You can do the same with the upper handguard. The upper handguard can be dremeled out, so you can use M-Lock in these gas slots, but I kind of like to leave them open because they're supposed to vent gas. Anyway, that's the factory handguard. Let's have a look at our next handguard. So this handguard is an Airsoft T91 handguard. It was sold by um, T91 Tactical to me. Fully understood, this is an Airsoft rail. This is not a firearm rail. This is an airsoft rail. Um, however, it does happen to work on real firearms. The build quality is overall okay. My main concern with this one is that the edges on it are just kind of sharp. It feels like if I ran my hand over it fast, I could get the cheese grater effect. Um, the fitment is, you know, it's okay. But my main gripe with this is how it's mounted up front. And let me get it on the gun and then I'll show you. So this one mounts normally pretty similar to the last one where we have lower slides up, upper, nice tight fit there. That's where our kind of our anti-rotation bit of the handguard is. And then we have our two 
halves that line up. Now, the pin that goes through here, this is where this handguard really is lacking in my opinion. Because if you look at this, it's got two cotter pins, so it's got this tiny little, these tiny little holes drilled through it. What you have to do, you have to get this pin the perfect distance in so that it both pins the handguard in place and allows you, let's see, let's get this all the way in. Okay. You have to get that pin in there and rotated correctly so that you can put these pins in from the front alongside the side of the gas block. And that is a really tricky thing to do. It took me a lot of tries to get it done. Um, almost the whole reason why I don't really like this handguard is this mounting system. Also, I don't think these are like the most secure kind of thing. And even when it is pinned, there is some wobble to this. So if you put anything up here, it probably wouldn't maintain zero, but at least the rail height is correct with the rest of the rifle. So anyway, I'll take that one off and we'll move on to our next airsoft rail. Next up, another M-Lock rail. Now, I was really honestly kind of pumped for this. This was a G&G &G manu or Taiwan G&G &G Armament, which is a fairly decently known airsoft company um, for making some okay parts and some decent airsoft stuff. I'm not an airsofter. I don't really know for sure. I just know it's one of the bigger names or it's one of the names that people know. I had high hopes for this. Ended up being a big disappointment because it does not in fact work on a real firearm. If you look at how the pins are laid out on this, you might think that this pin, oh, that must be the pin that goes right through there. Nope, it's too low. That pin is not the pin that goes through there. Um, this is designed to use a pin where the airsoft version of the t91 has a pin which is right through the gas block here and we have a pin here but it's a taper pin and it holds our gas block on and if we take that taper pin out then our gas block can slide forward like i've pulled the gas block off on this t91 um so while it's a taper pin and you could drill it out and put this thing through it uh not a good idea um so this one's a no-go g and g armament if anyone has an airsoft t91 and you want this i'd probably let it go pretty cheap so let me know uh, but is a no-go for a real firearm next up we have the quad rail now this thing is a tight fit but i like it um, this is an airsoft component sold by t91 to me t91 tactical it uses a cross screw with a thumb screw or a, with a kind of a thumbable nut on one side and a little walking walking washer and it is just two beefy chunks of aluminum and it works pretty well it is a very tight fit i'm gonna get on the rifle here but it's going to take me a minute so i'll cut this out because i'm gonna end up fighting this because it is a tight fit with this rear cup and getting this aligned is a little bit of a pain so for the quad rail, it's a pretty nice looking handguard and it's very, very solid. It's very, very tight. Um, what I, I, I'd say about it is that it's probably one of the best airsoft components I've ever seen. The feel of the finish is really nice. Um, it is heavy. It has a lot of weight to it. So keep that in mind if you're going the quad rail route. I would recommend this though. If you want a quad rail, this is probably the one to get. But we have one more and I think it's a little bit of a game changer. I'm interested in what you guys think. Let me show it to you. So our last handguard doesn't really look like anything too special until you look a little bit closer. It is a swap-in replacement for the original lower handguard. And it's designed to use the original upper handguard. So we can use our upper handguard with our lower. And this is aluminum, this is polymer, and now you start probably start to see what's going on with this, and you probably saw it at the beginning of the video. But, this is kind of special. If you look at who makes this, it's a T91 handguard concept, TS concept, I hope the TS doesn't mean what it means around here. Um, I'm not going to try pronouncing that name because I'm just going to mess it up, made in Taiwan. This feels like a proper firearm component. Uh, this is uh, really beefy. The milling is very, very well done. 
The mounting system in this is pretty unique. I actually have a couple pieces that are out of this. It uses a barrel collar right there. And it uses a cross screw up front. Our hardware here is metal, so you can replace it if you needed to. It's got two QD mounts on it, and then of course, M lock all around. So anyway, I don't know if they make an upper handguard that is an enhanced upper handguard. If they did, Picatinny up top would be kind of cool. Actually, I don't know. With this one, you might just want an M lock. But let's get this on. Let me show you a little trick on how to get this on because it's a little trickier than some of the other handguards. It's not just a tight fit. There's a little quirk to it that I found made makes it easier to install. So let's get to it. First off, this handguard doesn't really fit into this cup as tight as some of the others. Um, it instead fits tight on the barrel nut. And since we have that collar that goes around the barrel, we have to pull our, hand, our gas piston. So let's pull the gas piston off. Put that aside. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the collar that goes inside of this. You can see that it has a couple of holes that it threads into. And we're gonna get those, you're gonna, we're gonna, what we're gonna be basically doing is get this onto the rifle and then get those screws started before we back this onto the rest of the barrel. So I'm gonna pull the mag here and we are going to put this thing in a mini vise real quick. All right, so we're gonna get our rear cup back here. Now we're gonna get our handguard up and you can see it starts to sit over the barrel nut there. We just want it barely hanging on there. Now we're gonna drop our little collar over I'm going to start one of the screws and then I'll show you what it looks like underneath. Basically we have these two little screws that we need them both started. You don't want to be anywhere near tightening them down at this point. We just need them threaded in enough that they don't, they don't come falling out. Make sure not to cross thread these. They are threading into a steel collar, which is pretty nice, but you know, be careful with your stuff. Now we have the handguard just barely on the on the barrel nut with the collar loose, but the screw's holding it in place and those screws already started so we don't have to fight those screws with the collar under tension. Now we can pull this thing back. And there we go. Now we're back a little bit further. We gotta go a little bit further. There we go. Make sure this stays straight. We're gonna wanna look at our front pinhole. Make sure we don't overshoot. We need to go back just a little bit more. I'm gonna give it a tap with a light plastic hammer up front. And I think we might've actually overshot a little bit. There we go. We're almost, there we go, right there. Perfect. So now we know our lower handguard is about in place. Now we can mess with our upper handguard. Upper handguard, same as the normal one. This one actually will use the cup at the back for tension. The lower one will really not be using the cup at the back much at all, but slots right down in. Might need a few taps to get it set. And we'll see if our pull is clear. It's looking, looking okay. We're gonna try to tap this in. Um, Here we go. Uh, you don't wanna beat on screws like this, but if it's really close, sometimes it's just a light, like the lightest tapping can get you through. All right, now we're through to the other side. We, our screw is starting to bite, so we can just tighten her on up. Not any more complicated than that. Whoop. Except if I do that. All right, now that's tight. Now we tighten up our last two collar screws back here. And we just wanna kinda alternate between these. We don't really wanna snug one way down and then have the other not match. Remember, these are just tightening that collar that goes around the barrel. Just a slightly different way of mounting things than what a lot of people are used to. Um, this is obviously very much so not a free, free, free float to, ah, can't talk, mount, because we have points of contact, barrel nut, barrel, gas block. Now, this does have a cutout, so you could use a bayonet lug. I think all of these do, except for the T91 Tactical um, gas blowback. Well, I shouldn't say it's, they sell this. I don't know who makes it, but this one doesn't have a cutout for the bayonet lug. If you have one of those, this one does. 
Um, and yeah, that is a slick handguard. So let me get things mounted up and we'll have a little bit of a debrief here. Um, and let's talk about what we have here. I also need to get the gas piston in there. Another thing to note about this handguard from Taiwan, the especially the aluminum one, since we're using the factory upper handguard, we can still use the tri-rail. So you can get your extra Picatinny up front and be using the aluminum m -lock rail. Another good thing to note about this, that if you look at the clearance off the off the rail on the sides, it is a lot, it has a lot more clearance off of this rail because this rail cants inwards. It's got an angle that flattens out for the m -lock that are flat on the side, giving you a lot more space there if you wanted to put a flashlight on. So that's a neat point of compatibility since we're using the original upper handguard. So when it comes to T91 handguards, I think that's a decent showing of what's available. Um, the original plastic handguards, they'll do just fine. You can adapt them to do what you want, uh, especially with the three rails and the, you know, you can obviously drill on things. When it comes to replacement rails for up front, I think your best bets are either going to be the Bio, Bio, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, this TS Concept handguard, the enhanced M-Lock handguard with the QD points and everything, that's a good option. I also think that the Airsoft um, rail here, this the T91 Tactical sold Airsoft rail is a, another really solid option. I think I really enjoyed using this one, but I like this one more. And I think it's authentic to potential Taiwanese military use. The M-Lock handguard here, that one, not super impressive. This one, the finish is better than the other handguard, but it won't work. So, what's the point? Um, anyway, guys, hopefully this was interesting to you. If you know anything about this handguard or the company that makes it, or like if people use these in Taiwan, like this handguard, I'd be really curious because I love knowing what is actually getting used, what people think about things. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you if you're looking for a handguard, some of the options. These are kind of off and on available whenever they get shipped in. But anyway, you can probably hear that I have a cat that needs a lot of attention right now. So I'm going to go take care of that. I hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you guys later.